The fluoroquinolones are a synthetic antimicrobial class. When it was first introduced in the early 1960s, nalidixic acid, a quinolone, was quite limited in its clinical utility. Modification of these and other compounds led to the fluoroquinolones, which became... Quinolones and fluoroquinolones act on DNA gyrases and topoisomerases to prevent organization of nucleic acids uh, within the cell. These enzymes are critically involved in DNA supercoiling and essentially prevent the large, actually quite delicate molecules of nucleic acid from being destroyed during normal cellular functioning. By interfering with these enzymes, the fluoroquinolones result in breaks in the DNA strand during replication, triggering the SOS response, which is a bacterial stress response to DNA damage. These drugs are bactericidal, so they actually kill the organisms. They don't simply arrest their growth. Now, one thing that's really interesting about their mechanism of action is that because they kill through a bacterial response to damage, the activity of these drugs actually has kind of a Goldilocks zone. So at very low concentrations, I think it's reasonably intuitive that the drugs have a low level of activity, perhaps below the minimum inhibitory concentration. But at very high concentrations, the drugs paradoxically are less effective as well. And this is thought to be due to reduced transcription and translation of factors that are essentially necessary for bacterial suicide following the DNA uh, interference. Practically, what this means for prescribers is that it's important to follow label indications uh, for dosing. Too much drug is not necessarily a good thing. You can actually inhibit its activity. Looking at the spectrum of activity of drugs within this family, we start off with our quinolones, so things like nalidixic acid. These have a very narrow spectrum of activity, essentially only active against our enterobacteriales. Um, and, and actually more specific than that are enterobacteriaceae, so bacteria like E. coli. Nalidixic acid was also recognized to not achieve therapeutic concentrations in body sites outside of the bladder, so it was really only used for treating urinary tract infections and was quite limited in its clinical utility. Our first generation fluoroquinolones, so these have chemical modifications where a fluorine atom was added to the molecule, greatly expanding their uh, spectrum of activity and also improved pharmacokinetic properties. Drugs like ofloxacin are examples of our first generation fluoroquinolones, which had greatly improved anti-gram negative acti activity, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa. First generation fluoroquinolones are now still used for treating primarily eye infections with ophthalmic topical preparations like ofloxacin, uh, commonly seen in practice. Our second generation fluoroquinolones, commonly used products like enrofloxacin and ciprofloxacin, have improved anti gram negative activity and start to have some anti gram positive spectrum as well, so much broader spectrum agents than our earlier generations. And then finally, third generation fluoroquinolones, the veterinary product Pradofloxacin has a very broad spectrum of activity, retaining its um, gram negative spectrum and improving its gram negative spectrum, retaining gram positive activity, but gaining action against even anaerobic bacteria. So a truly broad spectrum product. I hope this description of the fluoroquinolones was helpful. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below.